Can you bring knitting needles on a plane? Hi everyone, my name is Norman and today I want to talk about if you can put knitting needles in your carry-on bags and knit on a plane. With tight security checks and body scanners all over the airport, this seems to be a problem, right? I mean, these days you can't even bring a harmless bottle of water, so are knitting needles forbidden? Actually, they aren't, but it's sadly a little bit more complicated. So let's talk about everything you need to know about bringing knitting needles on a plane. And I really urge you to watch this video all the way to the end and not stop here because I said, yes, you can bring them and then face an awkward situation later on. First of all, two little sentences about myself. I did not only spend the past three decades on knitting, I also visited more than 60 countries and most of them at least twice. I have flown with about every major airline and then some. So I think I'm in a very, very good position to talk about this topic and share some first-hand experiences with you. I whiled away so many hours knitting on a plane, I honestly lost count. But first of all, we need to talk about the legal basis. Is knitting on an airplane allowed? Well, basically what you would have to do is you need to check what the local flight or transportation administration says. If you are living in the US, then the TSA, the Transportation Security Administration, clearly says that you are allowed to bring knitting needles in your carry-on bags or your check bags for that matter. What they do say is that sharper objects should be wrapped or sheeted to prevent any injury to inspectors or baggage handlers. If you ask me, needle stoppers will do that just fine. In fact, according to the TSA, you can even bring scissors if they are less than 4 inches from the pivot point. And if you are based or flying from Europe, then there are very, very similar regulations. And I need to read this. Attachment 4CC of the regulation EU 2015-1998 of 5 November 2015, laying down detailed measures for the implementation of the common basic standards on aviation security, <sighs> clearly does not list knitting needles among the objects prohibited to bring on board an aircraft. What they do, however, exclude is objects with a sharp point or a sharp edge capable of being used to cause serious injury. So if you bring your stiletto sharp size 10 higher higher stainless steel needles, well, some security officer might argue, well, those are capable of doing serious harm. So no, you are not allowed to bring them. And if you ever sat on a knitting needle you forgot on your couch, you kind of know what I mean. Now there is yeah, more vital information you need to know, but at this point, here's a little tip. If you are afraid of not being allowed to bring your needles on board, then what you can always do is you can use or knit using interchangeable knitting needles and then bring a simple envelope, put your address and a stamp on it. And if they say, well, you're not allowed to bring your knitting needles, then you can detach the tips, put them in the envelope, send it back home and put your project on hold on the court, maybe using needle stoppers. And if you have spared tips in your checked luggage, then at least you will be able to continue knitting once you've landed. Now I want to be very very honest with you, I never did this and I never needed it, so I'm not sure how good this tip actually is. But if you are one of those knitters who had some bad experiences in the past and your needles were confiscated, or you had some positive experiences and those 8 hours on board pass away like, you know, it was 5 seconds, then please share when that was, where it was and which airline. I'm sure the other knitters watching will find this super helpful. We already settled that most authorities allow you to knit on board, but there is sadly one more party involved, the airline. And airlines have terms of service as well. As a rule of thumb, an airline cannot allow something the law clearly says is prohibited. 
However, they can add further restrictions. Here are some examples. British Airways, for example, explicitly allows you to bring knitting needles and crochet hooks, while Eurowing clearly says you are not allowed to put them in your hand luggage. The Middle Eastern carriers, so Qatar, Etihad and Emirates, don't even bother to mention knitting needles and I never ever face a problem when flying with these. Turkish Airlines, on the other hand, will not even allow you small scissors. In the US, most airlines just copy the TSA regulations and with carriers like United or Delta, you should be fine. Still, before you embark and if you intend to knit on board, then definitely make sure to quickly check out the website of the carrier you pick. I mean, in a way, you should do this anyway before any flight, because when it comes to things like lighters, batteries and so on, things can quickly become very confusing because some airlines only allow you to put that in your hand luggage while others say you need to put that in your check bags while yet others say you can't bring it at all. So it's never a bad idea to read those carry-on regulations. And here's one more very important tip. Also check out the regulations at your destination. It's all nice and cute that the TSA and British Airways says that you can bring your knitting needles. But if you are visiting a country with different regulations or off the beaten path or with well, let's call them interesting political structures, then do be careful. For example, Uzbekistan. I think there are like five or six security checks before you can embark, at least the last time I visited. And the country is known for having a problem with corruption and police officers with a peculiar take on the law. So, Setting aside that it's utterly too hot to knit there, uh, do be careful and check those regulations carefully. Also, while I wouldn't list Turkey among the exotic countries, Istanbul is a very popular international hub and you will have to pass a security check to enter the international transit area. And speaking from experience, that's the only place I ever had problems with even mildly sharp objects in my hand luggage. Now, before I go on and share more personal experiences with you, I would like to invite you to support me on Patreon. By becoming a patron, you can help me produce more videos like this one and ensure that I will be able to run this channel for many years to come. Plus, you get access to special knitting tips, patterns and behind the scenes content. Even a small contribution helps. Part 3. After all this legalese, it's time to share my personal experiences with you. As I said in the introduction, I am quite the veteran traveler and knitter. And in all my years of traveling, I couldn't recall a single instance where someone took away my knitting needles and told me no, I was not allowed to knit on a plane, no matter if I sat in economy or business class. That being said, there are still a couple of things I would like you to consider. First of all, I personally wouldn't bring pure metal knitting needles on a plane. That's because they show up quite prominently on any security scan. And you know, that just invites questions and the last thing you want is arguing with a security officer and quote the TSA regulations to them. I typically use the carbons needles. They are light, durable and well, not 100% sharp stainless steel. But wooden needles or plastic should be okay as well. And that's probably why I heard so many conflicting stories. I never had a problem, but I know for a fact that some people said their needles were taken, even though it was the same destination and airline. The second thing you should definitely consider is bringing only a small project. In the past decades, airlines spend a lot of time and effort to figure out a more efficient way to organize their cabins so the legroom got shorter and shorter. You don't want to knit a sweater or a blanket while sitting in economy. Smaller projects like socks, potholders or a hat or 
or so are much better for these cramped environments. And of course, you can't stick out your elbows and molest your seat neighbor with your knitting. And even if it's your partner, they probably don't think that's very cute. When it comes to knitting needles, I would probably say that circular needles are the better choice. Double pointed needles can easily drop and trying to fish out your knitting needles from in between the armrests can be tricky or even dangerous. Now I do bring my double pointed knitting needles, but I'm just saying that's something you definitely should consider as well. The fourth thing you need to consider is that your project should be reasonably simple for your skill level. The ride can be bumpy, you may have to interrupt your knitting on short notice, maybe because your seat neighbor needs to see the toilet or so. So a lace shawl with a 98 stitch repeat using Blackmore hair yarn and 2mm needles might not be the best choice. And of course, you really should invest in a small project bag where you can store your project in a reasonably quick way. You don't want to sit with your knitting needles in your lap during takeoff or landing. And you probably want your project out of harm's way during meal service. I mean, that mystery meat of the day is often disgusting enough. It does need to leave a lasting impression on your project on top of that. And the last thing you absolutely need to consider is take breaks and stretch out. Even under normal circumstances, you should knit for one hour straight without moving. It's not good for your hands, your arms, your shoulder and your whole back. Combine that with the cramped airline seats and you have all the ingredients for a tendonitis or severe shoulder pain. So yes, sure, you can knit on a plane, but make sure to stretch out ever so often. Move a bit, go to the toilet, or just walk up and down the aisle a bit. In the back of the aircraft near the kitchen or the toilets, there's often enough space for some simple stretching exercises. I know everyone else will be watching, but if they think that's weird, that's entirely their problem and not yours. With all these tips and things to consider when planning to bring knitting on a plane, I would like to talk about two more things. First, don't bring your knitting to countries where knitting has no place. If it's too hot, too dirty or too humid, well, you are essentially just carrying along that weight and might even risk soiling your project. Like with too fine sand, sun lotion, or I don't know, that getting mold into your wool because you thought knitting in the Amazon rainforest was a thing. And the second thing, don't plan too much and bring too much yarn. Typically, there's much less time on a good vacation for knitting than you think there will be. I mean, you are visiting a foreign country or a new place to enjoy it and that's why you are there. Typically not for sitting in the hotel room or the balcony to knit. There's so much to experience and to explore, so don't, well, waste it on knitting. I mean, if you are on a cruise and you know there will be a couple of days at sea or you will spend your whole summer in Alaska or Washington, well, by all means plan for a project or two. But even then, from my experience, you will end up knitting less than you think you would. And bringing yarn for three baby blankets, it's, well, let's call it optimistic. Anyway. That's everything you need to know about bringing knitting needles on a plane. Please like this video if you enjoy watching, comment with your questions and your feedback. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.